In this next chapter of the course, we will talk about two problems that are really general and fundamental, the max flow and the min cat problems. We will see that even though initially it appears as if they are different problems, they actually have the same solution uh, in, in some sense. And then uh, in the next lesson, we will see that these problems actually have many different applications and you can build algorithms to solve different problems based on the algorithms that we use to solve the max flow um, and min cat problems. So uh, these are the sections from your textbook. I should say that we will be covering this material in a slightly different order than the textbook, but um, you can find everything you need in these two sections for now. So Let's start with a minimum cut problem. Again, it has to do with um, weighted and directed graphs. But in this case, the weights that you see at the edges represent capacities. So you can think of the edges in some sense as, as pipes that have a certain um, width and, and that uh, determines the capacity of, the, of that edge of that pipe. And we are interested in some sense to transfer some think of it as material through the network from a specific node that we will be referring to as source to a target node that we will be referring to as sync. Notice that the source only has outgoing um, links and the sync only has incoming links. Later actually we will see that um, we can even um, work without that assumption. And you see that we have uh, a capacity for every edge. Now what do we define as cut? We have seen this concept uh, several times before in, in the course. We also saw it when we were constructing uh, minimum spanning trees. So a cut is a partition of the nodes of the graph into two sets, one of which A includes the source and the other B includes the target. Right, So one possible cut is to uh, only have the source in set A and all the other nodes in set B. Another cut could be, for instance, to have these four nodes as A and the rest of them as B. Uh, the capacity of a cut is defined as, let's say capacity of the cut AB, is defined as the sum of the capacities of all the edges that are um, going out of the set A. So in this case, uh, if this is my set A, the capacity of this cut is uh, the sum of the capacities of these three edges, which gives us, of course, uh, 30. But as you can see, I can have another cut, say this one, in which uh, I have to add the capacities of uh, these edges, Notice that I'm not adding the capacity of this edge because this is incoming to A. I'm only looking at edges that are outgoing from A. Now, this cut here has a much larger capacity, right, of, of 62. Uh, we can now talk about the minimum cut problem, which is what is the cut of the graph in these uh, sets A and B such that the capacity of the cut is minimum? So here we see that the minimum capacity is actually these three edges, which gives us 28. So now that we have defined uh, the minimum cut problem, let's talk about flows and the maximum flow problem. So first of all, some definitions. What do we mean when we say that um, we have a source to target flow or ST flow, the flow from the source to the target? This just means that we have an assignment of uh, a certain number to each edge, right? We call it the flow of that edge and we denote it by f of e for this edge e. So this flow assignment has to be such that the flow on each edge should be non-negative and also uh, it, should, it should satisfy the capacity of that edge. You cannot have a flow through this edge that exceeds the capacity. And the second constraint is that for all the nodes except the source and the target, the total flow that goes into a node should be equal to the total flow that goes out of the node. 
In other words, the flow that goes into a node is conserved. We don't have any flow that um, gets lost in that node, in that intermediate node, or that it gets generated inside that intermediate node. The idea is that the flow is produced only at the source and it's consumed only at the target. For every other node, the flow is conserved. One more definition. What do we mean as the value of this uh, flow on the entire network? So uh, let's denote this as V of F, right? This is the total amount of uh, flow that leaves the source, that is generated at the source and leaves the source. So this is the summation of F of V for all of the outgoing edges um, of the source, right? So in this example, as you see, we have a flow of four in this edge and zero in the two other edges. And that flow, of course, of uh, 4 is conserved. It goes to the target. So in this uh, uh, case, we have a value of um, the flow being equal to 4. Here is another example. The total flow in this case it is 10 plus 3 plus 11. That gives us uh, 24. And as you can see, again, the flow is conserved. This 10 units uh, split here as 6 and, and 4. Um, the three units that we have uh, here are actually combined with these four units as well as with one unit from this flow. And so we have a flow of eight here. Um, as I mentioned, we have 11 uh, units in this edge that um, split here into 10 and 1. What happens here is that uh, we have 4 plus 3 plus 1 gives us 8. And so the total flow, of course, that uh, goes to the target, the sink, is equal to the total flow that leaves the source, 24. Now, obviously, the, the big question is, how can we maximize the flow that we send from the source to the target? Uh, this will be the maximum flow problem that we will study in detail in the second part of this lesson. Let me just show you what happens in this example. The, it turns out um, that the maximum flow is 28. And you can get that by routing 10 units in this link, 4 in this, and 14 here. All of them, you see, satisfy the capacity constraints. Now, these 14 units, they will split here into 10 and 4. These 10 units will split here into 9 and 1. And these 4 units will combine with the 4 units that come from down here. They will give us 8 units. They will, combined with, they will be combined with this 1 unit to give us 9. And eventually we will get um, the flow of 28. I want you to notice that some of these links are saturated, meaning that the flow is equal to the capacity. As we will see, uh, one of the uh, properties of having a maximum flow assignment is that some links have to be uh, saturated. If none of the links are saturated, then we certainly don't have the maximum uh, flow assignment. Let me close this part by saying that um, there are literally uh, hundreds if not thousands of applications in which we have either the maximum flow or the main cut problems. Um, your textbook talks about some of them uh, that you see here. Uh, we will talk about um, a couple of these applications, in particular uh, matching, uh, finding disjoint paths. We will talk about them in the next uh, class. You can find additional applications in your textbook. Another interesting thing about these two problems is that they are the classical example of mathematical duality, which means um, that if you have the solution of one problem, then you can also solve the other. They are dual problems. Think of them as um, uh, siblings that are twins.